Hello and welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to part 24 of Hellraiser. This is a Boom comic series, which I've been running here on the channel three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you've missed part one, you'll find it linked down below, and I highly encourage you to go and check it out. With that being said, let's dive right into it. We're back in hell. We see Harry Damore. The army of the damned following him, as he sits atop his war horse. Ruling in hell is overrated. It's been a year since I stopped being Harry Damore, New York private investigator and part-time demon hunter, and became Damore, current high priest of hell, and in that time, I've come to understand one thing. Why Elliot Spencer would risk life and soul to quit this job. If it's not the incessant liturgies I have no ear for, it's the constant torture of damned souls I have no stomach for. Or it's directing the other Cenobites in their duties, including leading the new Crusader army in their drills. All in all, it's almost a relief when someone tries to assassinate me. Almost, anyway. And we see the assassin dagger out through a Cenobite skull. Another goes down. His name is Daru Marchetti, the cankerist, a theological assassin. I ran afoul of him years ago. Killing a woman to get at her unborn child at Christmas while muttering about a surfeit of messiahs. Nice guy. Supposedly, he gets his orders from the Vatican. Or from hell. Or both. For a minute, I assume him coming after me narrows the options there. Until he blows my mind. There are many hells. Of all people, you should know that. We see a demon holding a man. I am you. We see Marchetti standing there with his talisman. Marchetti's got some kind of talisman that prevents the powers of hell from hurting him. Glad I didn't put all my eggs in that basket. Harry Damore, gun out. Marchetti down. In the fray, I lose track of the cankerous special Cenobite killing knife. As we see Marchetti hanging from hooks and chains, the knife, the dagger, in the floor. Bet it'll show up sometime later between my ribs, Harry Damore says as we see a hand picking up the knife. Got his talisman though. That'll probably come in handy someday. We feed Marchetti into the Cenobite Converter. No sense wasting a perfectly good soldier, just because he's in someone else's army. But he's got one last surprise for me. You honestly think you're the one in control here, Damore? You're a puppet! Leviathan's pulling your strings! Think, Harry! Why would Leviathan choose you? It's a question that cuts me like a razor. Maybe it was supposed to. Why am I here? Why did Leviathan choose me when his last two high priests took each other down? An assassin sent to murder you, only to swell the ranks of Hell's new army, female says. My lieutenant is talking behind me, but I barely notice. Then she says something that cuts me too. What is this new army for? Why am I here? I've wondered that this last year, plenty of times, but my new duties were always there to distract me. Maybe they were supposed to. There are many hells. That's got a ring of truth to it. 
I fought plenty of demons that were far more Sunday school than Leviathan's worshippers. Things that smelled of shit and bad sushi. I always wondered why and where they came from. That part checks out. What about the rest of it? Why did Leviathan pick me? Am I being played? And what is this new Crusader army for? Crusaders imply a crusade, or am I reading too much into that? And then, my duties, they pull me away again, as I feel the tug of a device being solved, a gate between hell and earth tearing open, and I try, I try to ignore it. And then I see the gate's opener, Tiffany, Tiffany, assumed name, survivor of hell turned hell fighter, part of my old network, though I never met her, and currently working out of my old office in New York, at her fingertips, all my files, all my paranormal contacts in the world of the living. I couldn't tell you when I came to the decision I did, but duties be damned. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. All of this. We see a demon holding a man once more and it speaks. I am you and you are love. Stupid flashbacks. I hate stares. I send Tiffany back to Earth with a box that summons me and instructions to look up all my files for hellish activity that isn't consistent with what we know of the Cenobites. She asks what happened to Kirsty Cotton, her surrogate mother, and my predecessor as Hell Priest, and I tell her, well, good question, isn't quite a lie. What happened to Kirsty is a good question. I know where Kirsty and Elliot Spencer her predecessor are, locked inside a memory sphere together. Question is, why? Did Kirsty fail in some way to be stripped of her role and trapped in fantasy? Or did Spencer need a jailer? Or is Kirsty punishment for Spencer? Or is there a bigger game afoot? Now that's a stupid question. With Leviathan, there always is a bigger game. And seeing Spencer and Kirsty brings up another question that's been bothering me. You, Crusader, tell me about your life as a human. I had no human life. I have always served Leviathan. High Priest, I must attend to my duties. That's not true. Leading the witness, tell me of your life before you were a Cenobite. I have always been a Cenobite. Please, priest, I must proceed to my new posting. Shut up and think about it. Marchetti, now turned Cenobite, looked shocked, strained. I... I... As the cankerist Cenobite starts the twitch, I begin to think. Maybe I should have tried a different guinea pig for this. One who didn't come here expressly to kill me. Crusader, continue to your posting. Female steps in. A word, my liege. I don't know my lieutenant's name either. In fact, all I know of her is that she helped me against hell before while I was still human and that she was in love with Elliot Spencer. Not a good sign. What you are doing was unwise. If you'd kept probing at Marchetti's memories, he would have remembered his human life and the mission that brought him here. How do you know? Because that was Kirsty Cotton's curse to me and the rest of my Cenobium. She reminded us of the human lives long drowned under our decades in hell. I, Spencer, never forgave her that trespass. And why did your Cenobium have their memories replaced when I was left intact? Intact, <laughs> PTSD, flashbacks and all. And Kirsty and her Cenobium 
they all retained their human memories, right? Why? One answer to that seems staring you in the face, detective. Of course. Because Leviathan wanted things from me and Kirsty that we couldn't give if he stripped away our personalities. But what Leviathan wanted from me and my kind required violating our minds as well as our bodies. That's all very informative, provided I can trust my lieutenant, and I can't. She's been a servant of hell for decades, on top of being Spencer's woman in his Cenobite days. Interviewing witnesses isn't getting me anywhere. Time to try another tactic. Surveillance. Couldn't help but notice the cankerous Cenobite was trying to get somewhere. Did my lieutenant really want to keep me? from waking up the human inside him? Or did she want him to get where he was going? My lieutenant would squawk if she knew I was out in the pit without an honour guard, but the hoi polloi of Hell's Damned are good and cold right now, following their failed uprising. One runs in a damned soul, DEATH TO THE Cenobite OPPRESSORS! Almost there. DEATH TO HER! Bardwire rips out, cuts his head off, he's dead. This was the cankerous destination. We see a castle. So what is it? And why don't I know about it? The castle is guarded. What is the meaning of this? This way is forbidden. The guard refuses entry. Even holding out his weapon. But I am your high priest. To you, it is forbidden most of all. You have been warned, turn back now, or we will force you back. Get out of my way. So be it. He launches his weapon. But the talisman that Harry de Moore stole from Marchetti reacts. The force field launches up. Thank you, Marchetti. Very useful little talisman you brought me. And Harry de Moore walks in. And as he walks through the castle, he reaches an opening. Now what? Something catches his eye. He stops. Well. And we see what he was looking at. A five-headed abomination. A Cenobite beast like no other with blades for hands, axes, whips, chains, you name it. This is a true horror of hell, and Harry de Moore can only simply say, Oh, that's new. And he holds out the talisman as the Cenobite beast strikes, and it pushes him back. He's down on the floor, the talisman knocked out of his hand, presumably. And the creature begins a stranglehold on Harry. But before it can lay its fatal blow, a dagger flies in. It's Marchetti's knife, but... Oh, my liege, move! That wound won't distract it for long. Well, shit. Marchetti's knife cut through regular Cenobites like butter. It was supposed to assassinate me, a high priest. And it seemed to just make this thing mad. The creature stands, roaring, ready to strike once more. The hooks and chains of the Cenobite Order reach out and attempt to subdue the monster. My lieutenant invokes her chains. It's not enough. By itself. Harry launches his barbed wire. But together, it proves. Still, not enough. Fuck. That's it. We gave our best shot. All we can do now is escape with our lives. As they run out the door. But they're blocked. Never mind. What now, my liege? Know any good prayers? Who would hear us? There's still one last shot. But it's a long shot. Do you remember what it was like when you were human? Harry de Moore asks the Cenobite monster. Because you were once all of you were. It leans in. Trickery. Lies. 
It's not trickery. You were human once. You came here when you died, or you died because you solved a puzzle. Hell turned you into this. But you weren't always like this. Remember. Remember it. Remember your parents. Remember your brothers and sisters. Remember your family. Think of the sun on your face, the taste of your favourite food, the way it felt to fuck someone. Come on, who were you? The creature stands, each head questioning. I... I was... Oh God, I forgot. And in that moment, the creature begins to consume itself. It rips itself apart. Its guts spilling out. Its blades hitting its limbs, hacking at its own flesh. It kills itself, it rips its middle head off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Your quick thinking has cleared the way. Don't let the spectacle distract you from the real prize. As they walk up the stairs and open a door, a blue beam of light on their faces. And as they walk through, they see the labyrinth and a blue beam in the sky. You don't seem pleased, my liege. Pleased? Why? Of course I'm pleased. It's it's just... It's a lot to take in. I must consider this. All this further. In solitude. As Harry walks off. Harry steps atop his warhorse. That was sloppy. I should have held myself together better. She saved me, but I still don't know where her allegiances lie. Add that to the list, the big pile of things I don't know or haven't bothered finding out. I've been so preoccupied with my new life this last year, I've, I've let so much slip past me. He gazes down at his Cenobite army, such as Elliot Spencer's insurrection started with him tearing a hole between hell and earth. So the obvious question I should have asked is, what happened to the whole? And we see now what female and Harry saw. The blue beam of light was a gateway, a portal to earth. It's clear now, the new army, it's an invasion force. Hell is going to invade earth. It's the final battle, the end of days. Hell's army comes to Earth, and I'm supposed to lead it. <laughs>